Oh, hey you, yeah you, I have a question for you. My question is, have you ever felt a conviction in your heart? You know, something that you thought was wrong or you felt was not the right thing. That's a rare thing, by the way. In fact, there's a lot of young people that don't have that on their side. And there's a lot of young people not really that concerned with living a godly life, mostly just concerned about keeping their lives pretty comfortable and away from confrontation. I used to be like that. Now I have another question for you today. Has the culture or the people around you, people in your life, ever made it hard to do the right thing or what the word of God says was the right thing? Yes, for me especially. Living as a young Christian today, it's gonna cost you something and there's gonna be a risk involved. In fact, any kind of boldness and making any bold move is always going to have a risk and a cost involved. You know, like stepping up to a bully reaching out to somebody who is hurting, you know, and not being like the world, not giving into partying and drunkenness and being like all those worldly people out there. So what I'm gonna ask you today is two questions because we understand that there is a risk and a cost to boldness. And I, I don't want you to be like, all right, well, I hear that there's gonna be some kind of cost and risk involved and I want 100% money back guarantee when it comes to my Christian faith. Well, before you ask for that and before you throw in the towel, I want to ask you two questions today. The first one is this. Is the risk of identifying as a Christian and as identifying with Jesus, is it worth the reward? And also, have you ever counted the cost that it takes to be bold for Jesus? <laughs> Hi, my name is Darian. I am a youth leader and I'm a part of the YouTube channel, The Restart Life. You can also find us on Instagram at The Restart Life. And I'm so blessed to be here with all of you today. What a blessing it is to get dive into the word of God and talk about boldness today, and which is something that we all need. So I also have something on my YouTube channel called the Unite Youth Service. And what that is, is every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, we go in and we do a live youth service with messages just like these and worship. So if you're not doing anything on Sundays at noon Eastern Standard Time, then check us out on the YouTube channel, The Restart Life. So let's get into our message today. So in Acts chapter 4, which is where we're going to be in the Bible today, a young man and his ministry partner, Pete, is returning to the early church. And they are coming back with a report saying that standing up for Jesus in these days is going to come at a risk and a cost. In fact, they pretty much told them, you cannot speak the, uh, about the name of Jesus anymore or else worse consequences are gonna come. So just imagine they're coming in back to these believers with a report and they're saying this. When they heard the news of what uh, John, which is this young man, and Peter, when they heard what they said, they responded and they responded in prayer. And this is what they said. Acts chapter four, verses 24 through 31. Feel free to read with me. I'll be reading out of the NLT today. And it says, O oh, sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. This is their prayer, guys. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, why were the nations so angry? Guys, are the nations angry right now? Yes, they are. Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and his Messiah. That's We're seeing a lot of that today. So in fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, you've heard of that, another crooked governor, right? And the Gentiles and the people of Israel were all united, guys. Listen to that. They were all united. We as a church should be united, but these unbelievers, these people were all united. And look who it says they were united against. It says united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed, but everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. They're praying to God here. They say this. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants 
great, and here's the word, guys, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after this prayer, guys, listen to this. The meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they preached the word of God with boldness. I love this. So let's talk about the first thing, the risk of having a bold faith walk. So taking a bold stand for Jesus today is exactly what the devil hates. He doesn't want you living a godly life today. And he is the unction behind every wicked person who hates you for standing up for the truth uh, about abortion and the truth about biblical marriage. And then it calls you the hateful one back. Because of Satan's influence in America, and we have an anti Christ culture that we're living in. We are all losing our freedoms right now currently to worship, gather, and the majority of our leaders, they are not Christian guys, let's be honest. They call good evil and evil good. And every saved believer has an unction too. We know the devil does and he's the unction behind every unbeliever, but there is also an unction behind every saved believer. If you want to check out a reference and go a little bit deeper with that, check out John 15, 18 uh, through chapter 16, verse 1. Definitely worth checking out, talking a little bit about who that unction is, what that's all about. But we know that unction to be the Holy Spirit. Everyone who has been born again through Jesus Christ by believing in him has power working in and through them that raised Christ Jesus himself from the dead. That is an amazing, incredible power that we have access to. He is the Holy Spirit. He is the one who shook the meeting place that they were meeting in at this time after they prayed, right? He is the one who filled them with the boldness after their prayer. He is the one who revives us, comforts us. He keeps our fires burning and brings revival within our midst. Let me ask you a question today. Do you have the Spirit? The presence of the Holy Spirit in our life reveals to others that we are God's children. Do you have the Holy Spirit? He gives us peace when we don't know what to say and grants us great boldness when we pray. Guess what? Do you have the Holy Spirit? He is the power that helps us use our gifts that God has given us to do miracles even and stand firm even in the greatest heat that gets turned up in our life. Do you have the Holy Spirit? And lastly, he makes our faith bright and our futures bold. He is our seal of identification as God's very own forgiven and free children. Sons and daughters who are free. Let me ask you guys something today. Think about this. Do you have the Holy Spirit in your life? Through the Spirit, a young man stood up and said this before a council of religious people who wanted to snuff out their light. And this is what he said. He said, there is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven which in whom we must be saved. And guys, let me tell you, that statement alone that there's no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Salvation is in no one else. Guys, that is going to cost you something today. There's going to be a risk for saying that today. And it says the members of the council were amazed when they saw what the boldness of Peter and John. And there's two points with this. The first one is for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. The Holy Spirit uses ordinary people like you and me to convey an extraordinary message and an extraordinary truth where there is darkness, where there is religiosity, right? The Holy Spirit's power given to John and given to Peter and to us today is not a power to incite riots or make people bow to our will, no, but to cut to the hearts of the issues and to heal, serve, and spread the truth in love. And then the next point is, they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. And they were confident in the truth, not only because it was the Spirit leading them in what they should say, but because they had been with Jesus. Not only in the past, but guess what? Even though Jesus had already died and rose again, Jesus was still with them, and he is with you today, no matter what you go through. Do people see that you young believer, have been with Jesus? 
A popular saying in the financial world is this, the risk is worth the reward. Have you heard that? Like, is the risk worth the reward? Where one would wager if the payout in the end would be worth risking losing money if it fell through. Many young people have today have forgotten uh, about the rewards that are found in Jesus when we have the Holy Spirit. Salvation, becoming a new person, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Satisfaction, peace of mind and heart. Seeing God's work in your life, seeing the bigger picture, being reconnected with your creator, serving him alongside others, and probably the most amazing of all of these, eternal life with all its promises. No more death, no more pain, no more tears. There is a reward to having faith. I would say, yes, the risk is worth a reward, but what about you? you? Many young people have concluded that the suffering and the persecution that comes sometimes with being a Christian is not worth a reward, but I think it's also important that we count the cost before making our decision. So let's talk about the cost. There's always a cost for us to love somebody, right? To love like Jesus loves will always come as a cost. And loving others costs Jesus himself his very own life. I could love everything in the world, but and I in turn would not be loving God at the same time because the Bible says we cannot do both or we would be serving two masters. Jesus says there's only room for one master in your life to be either in the service of the Lord or in the service of the world. While going off to college or in the work world or wherever you are, in maybe even in high school right now, you, in order to stand up for your faith, there's going to be a cost to stand up against that darkness, to not be like everybody else in this world, to not go along with being a druggie or an immoral person. Just know that in the world, Satan does not play fair. He does not. We can go out with fake boldness and try to fake it, right? But we should not. We need to go out in the Holy Spirit to stand up to this darkness because we're going to encounter it. Boldness in your faith is never supposed to be to make a name for yourself and to stand out or be risky or edgy, right? Or not even to make people mad intentionally. I know there's those kind of people in this world that just want to upset people intentionally. It's never something that you should try to be, young person listening right now. Never something that we can do our own strength. Let me tell you this here. You will be bold automatically if you are close to Jesus. And let me repeat that nice and slow for you. You will be bold automatically if you are close to Jesus and have the Holy Spirit. The world hates Jesus, right? So the world might hate you, but the spirit that is in you, young believer, is greater than the one in this world. If we are like Peter and John, then we are going to be bold. We are going to have a personal, everyday relationship with Jesus Christ. Not trying to be bold. We will be bold because we have Jesus. We are walking with him and we have the Holy Spirit. So let me ask you this as we close. Is following Jesus really worth it? Let me just ask you this as well. Has God been good to you? He's been good to me and I know he's been good to you. And he's laid down his life for you and me. Yes, I believe in my perspective, he is worth it all. So if we're going to do this, if you're going to go out and live a bold faith walk and be bold in your walk, how are you going to do this? What is some practical advice for this? If you've counted the cost and the risk is worth the reward, here are some practical tips for you how to stay strong in your faith and have a strong faith walk. Number one, you have God's word on your side. It's your weapon against the enemy, like it says in the armor of God, that the word is a sword of the spirit. Number two, you have other believers that you can connect with and fellowship with and unify with during these hard times. Connect with other believers who are godly. Number three, like the disciples did in Acts chapter four, what we read, we can respond when things get hard with prayer. That's how we respond to the risk and the cost. We pray about it. We pray that the Lord would change the hearts of those who are hardened, the, those in our government, those who are corrupt, those who are struggling, right? We pray. That is a weapon in itself. And number four, the last one, if you are a born-again Christ follower who has the Spirit of God living in you, you have an unction that the world cannot have inside of you to give you what to say and to direct your path. 
And if you have not turned to God today, if Jesus Christ is not your Lord and your Savior, today is the day of salvation for you. Accept Jesus into your heart today so you can have that Holy Spirit, so you can be bold, not try so hard to be bold and to try to be different, but that you will have Jesus and he will change your life and give you uh, faith over fear and boldness. And if you've walked away from your faith and you had it at one time, it's time to come back. The days that we're living in are so difficult. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So come back and start your journey on a bold faith walk today. You can be bold too. So in recap, identifying your life with Jesus comes at a risk to your reputation and may even cost you something, maybe even your life or maybe just an uncomfortable life. But the reward is worth the risk. Anyone who believes and remains close to Jesus will be bright and bold in their faith walks automatically because you're with him, right? You will do great things because the spirit that is in you is greater than the spirit in this world. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this message. I hope that it fired you up and encouraged you. I know it did for me. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give these young people and anybody who is listening to this great boldness in your sight, Lord, and in this world, we are living in some crazy times. Things are rising up that we've never seen before. And I just pray as we are in the last days here, Lord, that you would raise up a generation who is going to be bold, that's going to stand up for the truth of the word of God, no matter what it costs, no matter what the risk is, Lord. Jesus, give us your Holy Spirit. Renew us in our faith. Renew us in the spirit today, Lord Jesus. Fire us up so that we can go out and be an example to those who are older than us, younger than us, and those who are unbelievers. It is by our love, Lord. It's by our unity and and it's by our boldness that the world will know that we are your followers, Jesus. We pray that you would just do that in our lives. Let it be done in Jesus' name. And we all pray, amen. Guys, have a blessed day. Thank you so much for watching this. This message was called The Risk and Cost of Boldness. You can check out more on my YouTube channel, The Restart Life, or on Instagram at The Restart Life. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. And keep repping Jesus no matter where you go, no matter what you do. Love you all. Goodbye.